which I, we're tying it together with uh, the 100th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. And Matt did play a part in the uh, rescue efforts and the days following the sinking of the ship. Do you have any recollections of, you know, hearing anything about it or, you know, something first person that might have been told about it or his role? Sure. Growing up as a child, I was fortunate enough to be able to spend the summers down here living with my grandparents in Chatham. And uh, specifically, uh, I mean, gr growing up, I used to hear family stories about the Titanic and my grandfather's involvement with them. But uh, during one of the summers while living down here with them, uh, it was very common after dinner at night that we'd go out and sit on the uh, big enclosed porch on their home and sit there and just talk. And one night, I specifically asked him about uh, the Titanic. Can you tell me about that? And when he started the story off, he was, he was very excited because at first he was saying, well, he says, all of us around the Marconi stations, we were very, very excited about this because this was the largest ship uh, ever built by man. And Mr. Marconi, who was their boss, had uh, been awarded the contract to provide the uh, radio communications on board the ship, which he did. So all of the equipment that was on the Titanic was installed by the Marconi Corporation. And the two radio operators were Marconi employees. So there was obviously within the company an awful lot of pride and excitement about this whole coming uh, event of the ship coming across. Uh, and what happened and then that night, and his, and his voice at that point tends to trail off as he gets sad. He, says, he was working the overnight shift uh, on Sconset on Nantucket that evening of the 14th. And it was, he said it was a rather quiet night. And, uh, and then he could faintly hear off very, very faint signals, but he could hear it. And what it was, it was the uh, message from the Titanic, the CQD, which is the distress signal, could hear it. Um, and he wrote all of that down as he was taught to do, and he forwarded all that information onto New York to Marconi headquarters. Well, as the night went on, they, they were hearing more and more, and he was writing it all down. And then, uh, because at that point, the communications was between the, the Carpathia, who was the primary rescue ship, on site that night. And then for the next four days, uh, my grandfather and the other operators at the station were in contact constantly with the Carpathia, and they were receiving information about um, the survivors, and also they started to put together and Ed transmitted the list of the, of the known dead who didn't make it. Uh, but also there, were, there was moments of joy during that time period uh, when they were taking the messages because an awful lot of the messages were messages from the survivors on board the Carpathia who were sending messages through to their family on shore, telling them and letting them know that they were alive. So it was, it was, a, it was a very emotional time period. I mean, there was moments of happiness because it was, it, was, it was great to be able to spread the word that everything was okay. And of course, at the same time, they were, as they were doing it, they were taking, making up the list of the known dead, who obviously was a far greater number than the survivors. So what's your thought about all this, that your, your grandfather had a part of you know, history here? Yes, he did. Uh, obviously, it wasn't uh, something that any one of them were, really wanted to be put into the middle of, but they were. And one of the important things to remember is, is that and we kind of take for granted today because we have, we have GPS, we have cell phones, we got all kinds of communication. So, I mean, if that accident happened today in 2012, it would have been known within minutes around the world that what happened and rescue would have been on its way. But back in that day, there was only one form of communications with everything that was going on, and it was the Marconi Wireless. That was the only form of communications to the world of what was happening. And how about switching back to today? What are your thoughts for yourself and your family for, for this uh, ceremony that you're having? Well, we're doing it to recognize and show our love, and, and we really, really respect the man, which we already have throughout our lives anyway, respected him. Uh, but this is nice because it, it helps give him a little bit of recognition for his work and the other Marconi operators uh, during that time period, both on board the ships and on the land stations for their efforts with the uh, disaster.